What's up, guys? I have an interesting concept here. What if the Bank of America was actually the company behind XRP and Ripple, and JP Morgan was the company behind Ethereum? Why? Well, have you ever wondered why we don't have even a single American bank behind the L1 protocol? Even though the Bank of America and JP Morgan both filed a patent, the use of blockchain back in 2012 and 2013, respectively? Now, that seems like a far fetched idea, but what if? It's not. That means everything in the media and that the SEC does could be staged to push the masses away from purchasing the perfect future coin, XRP. Think on that for a second as we roll that intro. As always, welcome to MoneySide, your favorite crypto channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you get updates when we drop new videos. And don't forget to smash that like button and remember you can always leave a comment or a question in the section below. So my understanding is now Kraken can no longer do this domestically in the United States for U.S. citizens, unless, I guess, they register as a security. Does that break the business model? Do you understand it? Does that mean they can't be in that business? Or can they just come back and say, okay, now we'll register, we'll make the disclosures you want? It's, it's, uh, I'll make it more generic. These storefronts, these, these crypto exchanges, crypto lending platforms, crypto staking as a service, they need to come into compliance and they are generally non-compliant right now the investing public is not only at risk by the speculative nature of crypto but they're at risk of ending up in line in a bankruptcy court because a lot of these platforms are doing things they're not disclosing so to answer your question yes firms can come into compliance time-tested rules register their offerings and properly disclose the risk and what they're doing with your funds behind the scenes. And that would be uh, a compliant field. In this case, Kraken chose they didn't want to offer this in the US and we settled. Uh, Gary, you mentioned there are other people who are doing this. How similar are they? Or is this a one-off? We had, for example, Coinbase come out right away and say, oh no, what we do is very, very different. We're not included in this. What does this mean for others such as Coinbase? Look, the, it's, the facts and the circumstances all matter, but generally speaking, what happens is the investing public, hundreds of thousands or millions, are transferring control and ownership of their tokens to these platforms, and the platforms are soliciting them and then saying, I'll give you a 2% return or up to 21% return. Look, this was at the middle of something that you might remember from last year, Terra Luna, mm. and they called, they, they had an anchor protocol and it was lending. It was in the middle of Celsius and Voyager that went bankrupt. We brought uh, a settlement with BlockFi. We brought enforcement actions against uh, Gemini and Genesis. That's Gemini was the Winklevine twins. So regardless of whether you call it earn, lend, staking as a service, annual percentage yield the labels aren't what's important it's the economics and if the investing public is putting their hard-earned funds or crypto into a platform and getting these yields returns staking as a service returns the law says they need disclosure and the companies need to register. As you know so well, we've seen a lot of money go into various crypto uh, devices, if I can put it that way. And we've had some lost as well in things like the scandal of FTX. Is this the first, this Kraken sentiment, do you think this is the first of a series of these now? Will we pick up the cadence of the enforcement and the regulation of crypto? Well, we brought over a hundred actions, so, um, uh, this may be the first related to staking as a service, but these various uh, platforms, uh, companies that are offering investment contracts to the public need to come into compliance. And there's time-tested ways to do that. And we stand open to work with them to do that. There are forms on our website on how to do some of this, but also the staff is ready to talk them through it or otherwise uh, you'll see other actions from our enforcement. Uh, uh, and these are all considered and reviewed by our five member commission.
I'm mindful of the fact that this was a settled case. You didn't have to take this to court. That can often take, as you know, a long time to get resolved. Take a look at the Ripple situation. Uh, is there an incentive for the next one to come in and, and settle instead of taking it to court? I mean, that is to say, does the price go up as the time goes on? Well, I think it's about protecting their customers. And if they were looking out for those millions and hundreds of thousands of investors they'd have, they too should want to put out this proper disclosure. But here's the challenge. This is largely a non-compliant field and they're co-mingling customer funds with their businesses. They're operating uh, exchanges often. They're operating like broker dealers, like hedge funds, often trading and market making against their customers, lending those tokens out. These are things that in, in the financial world, these very real conflicts we say you have to separate out and separately register an exchange. We don't let the New York Stock Exchange also run a hedge fund and trade on the exchange. Why would we do it here? I've said this time and time again. Gary Gensler is coming, guns a blazing for the whole crypto community. How many cryptos do you think operate on the POS consensus? A lot, right? Well, as it so turns out from the interview, Gensler is starting to rank all cryptos in the same category as Terra Luna. Now, that's a pretty dangerous way of thinking, especially when he has the power to bring down crypto companies or even cause their cryptos to lose value. If that happens, we will be on the verge of another crypto crash. And this time, it could likely be worse than the first time. This time around, I highly doubt all the cryptos without any real life value will make it through the storm. What happened with FTX was at one of issue, but Gary Gensler is using this issue to enforce their rule over cryptos. That's the reason Kraken chose to settle and move their staking feature to other countries. Pretty soon, Gensler will be going for other exchanges. He tried to go for Coinbase, but wasn't successful. But I think the next one in line is Binance. Binance is another large crypto exchange, which also offers staking, and that could expose them to a lawsuit by the SEC. So if you have any coins on Binance or any other exchange right now is the best time to store them in a cold wallet. All in all, Ripple is still fighting the good fight for the whole crypto world. If this company is successful, the heat on crypto will reduce. But as of right now, I highly think things are about to get worse before they get any better. If you thought last year's bear market was worse, wait until you see what is on the horizon. Meanwhile, the rest of the world is embracing XRP. For instance, Spanish crypto exchange launches XRP debit card, which includes up to 9% cash back. And that's not all. Corporate clients are undergoing ERP migrations, and they want one single common method. What does that sound like? RippleNet. Duh! The future. It's near, guys. As always, do your own research and always trade safely, guys. We offer prayers for the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and in Syria. Please keep in mind, we're not a licensed financial advisor. All videos on this channel are intended for entertainment purposes only. Let us know what you think in the comments section below and let's have a conversation. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and please click on that subscribe button below and turn on notifications so you get informed whenever we post our amazing content. Thanks again and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next Money Side.